Hey everybody, I thought after I saw IGN do a horrible best of list for Sierra games that I would make my own tier list. Now it is not every Sierra game, it's the ones I know the best. So we're going to get started, I'm going to click on here. Okay, so we have our tier list, um, Superior to Failure. And we're going to get started here. And I'm going to start with one that I know is going to go at the very bottom. Now, that is not King's Quest V as in the PC version. That is the King's Quest V for the NES. That thing is hot garbage. It's an abomination. It should not be there. <laughs> I actually have another one to go right with that. And it is the, the Sega Master System version of the original King's Quest. Hot garbage garbage down it goes so <laughs> i thought that that would be a good way to start to go ahead and get two of the really bad ones out of the way first and i'm going to kind of go with the smaller series and then go up to the larger games as we go so let's look here at the black cauldron uh it is interesting in the fact that it does not use point and click but it does use kind of like the F keys to do stuff and it does have a really mean climbing section and it can get kind of random so I'm gonna put Black Cauldron right here it's not bad but it's not my favorite by any means uh, when I played it I felt like I was kind of suffering a little bit so it needs to stay down there in the seas um, another game that is a lone game is a dynamics game called Rise of the Dragon and the point-and-click part, part's really good, and I do like the Sega CD version of it where they do have the voice acting with some decent voice actors. But um, there's one part at the end where it kind of goes action scene -y, that it gets really bad. Now, it's not as bad as this. It will go in my B category because I do like the game a lot. Um, and it, So it will go there. Uh, Rise of the Dragon is a decent game. And while we're at it, let's put Willie Beamish in the B section. I like Willie Beamish. Have not played it for a long time. We'll probably play it on this series eventually. And I might change, but my opinion of it from when I played it back in like 2011 for the channel, the old channel, I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, there is some kind of cruel ways it can destroy your life. But overall, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Kind of felt like the early 90s Simpsons kind of thing going on there, so I did enjoy that a lot. Um, another small series, let's see here. Laura Bow, Colonel's Bequest, boom, the first superior game. I mean, give me a break. We just finished playing it on the channel. It's a fantastic game, great female protagonist. The whodunit stuff's really good. Uh, if you've never played it and you get to the part where you find out where the bodies are, if you can figure that out on your first play, really, really cool. Lots of, lots of fun things to do in that game. Lots of replay value. Just an amazing game. Definitely S rank. So, that goes to the second game in the series, which is not as good, but it's not bad by any means. Where did it go? Did it disappear? There it is. Yes, the Dagger of Amon Ra is an A. It is not as good as Colonel's Bequest, but it is still an amazing game in its own right. Lots of great things to do. Voice acting's terrible, but great at the same time. Uh, you can miss a lot of things very easily in this one, but the deaths are fantastic and how you deal with them. Definitely an A-rank game. Uh, you should play it if you have not. It is just an amazing game from start to finish but just not as good as the Colonel's Bequest. Now we will look at another <laughs> game by itself, and that is Gold Rush. Gold Rush, you're going to go down here in the sea. It's not a bad game, but it hates you. It 100% wishes you to die, uh, and it is so easy to die in this game and fail miserably. Uh, I did manage to get a perfect score run of this. I still, to this day, don't know how I pulled it off, but we did. I, I will never play it again. That was good enough for me to get that perfect. There's two games on here that I've done that, and I'll never play them again. Um, 
But Gold Rush is not horrible, and it does have some great historical value. It's just mean, and and super mean for no reason, really. It's just like, oh, you want to lose points? Well, step on the grass. Oh, you want to lose points? Get gonorrhea and die. You know, I mean, it's just kind of like... It just kills you for no reason, and if you and if you don't get stuff done quick enough at the beginning of the game, you just gotta start over. It's it's just things cost too much. You can't afford to move on in the game because you waited too long to figure out what to do. And speaking of another game that hates you, Codename Iceman D. The submarine parts of this game ruin it way too much. Jim Walls is just like procedure. I'll show you procedure. And then he gives you those sub parts. Don't play this game. Just don't. Watch my Let's Play of it. Watch somebody else play it. Don't play it yourself unless you really want horrible death to occur to your brain. It is not fun, and how dare they want to hate the player so much. This game just... Bad. No fun. Don't play it. Now, I didn't put Manhunter 2 on here because I've never played it, but Manhunter 1... Is going right beside this one. It's playable, but it's not fun. I, there's so many little like mini game things that don't work right and are very frustrating. The game itself is ridiculously hard. The whole opening where you have to follow one of the eyes is one of the hardest things I've ever tried to play in my life. There's a reason these games aren't up on the channel because I don't want to play them. <laughs> They're not fun. They are just mean to you, and I feel like the guys that made it are mean to you in, like, the death stuff. It's like, let's see how you screwed up. <laughs> no. Do not do not waste your time on these. They're not fun. No. Terrible. Another game on its own that I would put in the B rank is Torrens Passage. Torrens Passage is an okay game. It's towards the end of the Sierra point-and-click time with, you know, they were using a lot of the the cartoony graphics, which I don't have a problem with that per se, and the game itself is pretty good. It's just kind of short, and the puzzles are just kind of meh. I don't know. It's very meh to me. It's not C, because it, it, it's I've played it more than once and enjoy playing it. It's just, it's not the top-ranked Sierra stuff. Like, would I recommend playing it? Yes. But would I recommend buying a box copy and spending lots of money on it? No. That's kind of why I would put it in the B area. It's it's fun. Uh, voice acting's pretty good. So like I said, some of the graphics are pretty nice. The main character is likable. It's just, eh, it's just okay. Now, the next one, Freddy Farkas, Frontier Pharmacist. He goes in the A slot. Super fun game. Great voice acting in that game. Hilarious. Done by Al Lowe as well, but it just it's the typical Al Lowe style. Uh, Cam Clark plays the lead in it. Uh, it's got some pretty tough timed puzzles that can be a problem, but overall it's a super fun game with very easy to figure out puzzles. Don't make you feel stupid when you can't figure them out. It's just timing. Like I said, timing puzzles every now and then can be a problem. The big issue with that game is the pharmaceutical stuff where you actually have to make pharmaceuticals with copyright protection stuff that's why i don't give it an s ranking it is so close to perfect but it's just the pharmaceutical part just drops it down to an a for me even though that is what he is it's just they did that for copyright purposes and i kind of hate it <laughs> i mean that's kind of the bad part about it so i still think it's a fantastic game though definitely worth the a ranking now, oh gosh, let's go to the Conquest series. So that means I need Conquest for Camelot, which is a pretty fun game, but it's ridiculously hard. I'm going to put it in the B slot. It's, it's not as mean to you as Gold Rush, but it is mean. Uh, this game does not want you to beat it, but it is beautiful graphics. It has beautiful everything. It's a fun, fun game, but it doesn't want you to win at all. <laughs> so I don't think it needs to be up here, and it definitely does not need to be in a C rank. So, you know, I do recommend playing it if you have any interest in the medieval time period, particularly with uh, the quest for Camelot and the Holy Grail and those things. It is worth your time. It's pretty fun. Just don't expect it to like you in any way. It will beat you. Which leads to a better game, 
Conquest of a Longbow, Adventures of Robin Hood. This game only does not get up into the S rank for me because of a couple of things, and it's all copyright based. I hate doing the hand stuff with the druid and all sorts of things that you have to still have the uh, documentation for. That gets really annoying. But it's great with the Merry Men. It plays very well. Robin Hood is very likable in this. The graphics are amazing. The MT32 sound is wonderful. The story itself is great. Put into days. Super fun things. You don't have to do everything on particular days. Some things can be turned around. There are many different endings based on how well you do. Just a outstanding game. Well worth your time and well worth owning a box copy. I'm still looking to get one of those myself. It's one of the few I don't have. So, definitely an a rank game. Definitely great. Now, let's see. What do I want to do next? Let's do Quest for Gloria, because I love those games. This won't be very hard. Alright, where is Quest for Gloria? There is the first one, but that's the remake. Where is the... There it is. Okay. Gotta go in S. Quest for Glory 1 is one of the first games I ever played on a PC... I absolutely adore it. I love the parser system. I love being able to choose your hero. I love to be able to have three different ways through a game and different ways and tons of replay value. Uh, it was just the first game I felt like I was the person in it and I was in control and it was just an amazing game with beautiful graphics, great sound. I've been playing this game since 1989 and have no regrets. And that's going to you're going to see a lot of high stuff in this one. The remake unfortunately goes down to here for me. I feel like the remake just eases everything up too much and kind of takes away from what made the game so special. Um, I've never liked the remake as much as the original. Uh, the music is great. I love the claymation that they use for that version. But there's just something different that I can't place that is not what I want. <laughs> so, it does dip down for me, unfortunately. Still a great game, and if you don't like Parser System, you need to play that version. It's a great point and click. But it's just not on the same level as to me at all. There's just something different about it that I just don't like. And this is my tier list, so damn it, I'm going to do what I want. Now, the second game. Up we go, back to S rank. This game is fantastic. I love the city system, going through the tunnels, going through trying to use the map to figure out what you're doing. Uh, the story is great. The day system works well. You feel like when you beat the game, particularly if you become a paladin, that you have truly done something special for these people in this town. As you beat more people and as you save people and do things for people, you are recognized for doing it. And you really do become a hero. And right there and there, that makes that just an s rank game for me. And just fantastic. Uh, you have to play these games. I'm just telling you, they're so good. Which leads to my least favorite of the series, which is still a great game. But it's got to be B. I can't put it at A. The reason why, I feel like this game was rushed. And I, I'm pretty sure it was because the fourth game was supposed to come next. And the graphics are beautiful and that has nothing to do with it. The, the gameplay is just not the same. I don't like the Savannah as much. I don't feel like you can do as much. I feel like the Thief is completely worthless in this game, which, you know, basically alienates an entire person, <laughs> so, I, and I used to play as the Thief as a kid, I'm more of a Paladin player now, so I remember when Rakesh says, I don't know how useful your skills are going to be here, and <laughs> it's like, oh, <laughs> and I was kind of, that's kind of why it's where it is with me, is B. However, they quickly, completely redeem themselves with what is my favorite game of all time, Quest for Glory 4, Shadows of Darkness. And once again, this goes back to you feel like you are really a hero in this game as the game goes on. Because the beginning, no one knows who you are. You're a stranger. They all hate you. And no one wants you there. The Burgermeister can't wait for you to leave. And as the game goes on, these people see you do good things for people. And the next thing you know, you become the hero of their land and everyone loves you. And it's just so cool to watch that as the game progresses. That is important to me in storytelling. And that's why that is an s rank game, bar none. You need to play that series, period. <sighs> Quest for Glory 5 is a tough choice because I really like this game. But it's just ugly. 
and it's just because of the time period. I'm putting it at B. It can't go to A. It definitely can't go any lower. It is. It's still better than me than, than the third game, which some people won't agree with. But I still 100% love this game and love everything about it. It's a great ending to the series. I just I never liked what they did to Rakesh. That's kind of a problem with me. They aged him significantly. I don't know why, but I really do like the game overall. Doing the shops, do the map. Everything about it coming coming back together, full circle. People from the first game, second game, third game, fourth game, all coming back. I really do like that. So, still a great game. It's just hard to play now because it was just a early 3D. Nothing against this game. It is an amazing game. Please play it. So that's another whole series gone. And as you can see, the average area is kind of where I like to stay. And that's a good thing. If you're in the B section, that's great. Now, let's go ahead and get the SWAT games out of the way. And I'm going to go ahead and put Police Quest SWAT in the C section because it never worked for me. You know what? Never mind. It's going down even farther. D. Because I never could get past the little old lady. She would murder me every time. And I never got to see the rest of the game as a kid. And it just perturbs me to this day that it was so poorly made. They were trying so hard. Just the FMV stuff just did not work in this situation. However... I will put SWAT 2 in the B section because I really did like that game growing up. Um, I loved kind of the uh, strategy elements of SWAT 2. I used to just play the uh, uh, terrorist versus police officer like all the time on it. I, I play, put way more hours into SWAT 2 than I put into any of these games down here. So it's still a really good game. And I never played the other SWATs, so I'm not going to put them on here since I don't know anything about them. But that leads to Police Quest. Now, there. this is the original, I think. It's going to go down here. Uh, it has not aged well. <laughs> and some of the stuff in it... <laughs> but I just don't... It's just so old. The, the car driving is so bad. And how you have to type everything in as it goes. It's just not aged as great as some of the other ones. But that's okay, because then they did a remake, and it's a lot better. And it's well worth playing. It's got great music, really good graphics. Sony Bonds is very likable. They got rid of a little bit of some of the questionable stuff from the earlier talk of it. And, and nothing against them. It was the time period that it was made in. You, you know, it, it was just what people did. So, you know, I still laugh at some of the things that they did. But I still feel like the remake is a far better game. But that's going to lead to what I think is the best game in the series, and it gets an S rank from me. That's Police Quest 2. It's basically just playing Miami Vice. You know, you don't have to do the driving, which is just, thank you, you know, and it just, it's just so fun. Uh, Adam and I played this as like a buddy cop thing, and we had a blast playing that game, and I've, and the, the music is amazing. It sounds ironically better than the music that John Hammer made for the third game, and he's actually the Miami Vice guy. So, you know, it was just done so well. And just beautiful graphics for the time, great music, so many different ways to play the game, and so many ways to horribly fail. But it is a wonderful game, definitely worth your time and your money. Which also leads to another great game in the series. Not as good, but pretty good. And that is the third game. It does have a great twist. Um, the driving is really bad in this one. But it's not enough to drop it down to B. I'm going to keep it up in the A section just because the music overall. The story is great. I just really like everything about that game. And I do. if you haven't watched our Let's Play of it, check that out and you'll see why we liked it so much. It's just a true joy of a game to play. Which leads to open season. I, it's not a, a distinct failure. Uh, a lot of what's wrong with this game is it completely changed everything. I'm going to go ahead and put it in C. I don't think it's as bad as SWAT because it's playable. And it, when I, you know, the big thing is it's got Daryl Gates, which is controversial. But he really didn't have a lot to do with the game. It was more of they stuck his name on it because he was controversial and it helped sell the game. Uh... It's just not as good as the other ones. It's not Sony Bond. You're not in Litton anymore. You know, I mean, it's just they changed too much. And it's that FMV type point and click where you have like real people over it and the voiceovers were really bad. 
game starts out with a child murder. It's just, ugh, not really my thing. So it goes down pretty low. And while we're in FMV territory, let's do Phantasmagoria. I got, I got to put it right here. And people are gonna go, what? I love <laughs> that game. There is just something about it that is so super good. It's so cheesy, but it's great. And Roberta really took some risks when she made this, in particular with <laughs> the rape scene <laughs> and other things like that. I mean, this game at the time was super controversial and super great. It's a great game. It's just, boy, he sure got mad over some drain cleaner. <laughs> and that leads into the second game, which is still good, but it's not great. Um, <laughs> It, it's really bad when it comes to the puzzles and whatnot, particularly endgame, that's why it's got to go as low as it does. The puzzles just get head-scratchingly bad, and I just do not think that it could be a B-level thing. It's a fun game, I love it, but it is just not as good as any of the games on that list. It does not deserve to be on there with them. So, it is worthwhile. Um, it's got an interesting twist if you've never played it. Um, we have played it on the channel if you want to check it out. Uh, it is pretty fun. We had a good time. So that's going to lead... Let's do Gabriel Knight next, because there's three. And I don't know what to say about the original Gabriel Knight that hasn't been said before. It's just the best. I mean, it, it. the music is great. The voice acting is fantastic where you have Mark Hamill and you have Tim Curry. You, I just, I don't know what to say. The story is great. The graphics are great. The music is great. The voice acting is great. The story is great. There is nothing about this game I dislike at all. I have played it probably the almost as much as the Quest for Glory series. It would probably be my second best game on here now of all of them so well worth your time and your money to play this game as is the second game the second game gets an a for me it is one of the best fmv games period i just hate that tim curry's not there uh it just it continues the story and in my opinion is a really great game we will get to it on the channel eventually but uh i wanted this so bad as a kid my parents would not buy it for me because of the cover I was so upset. I didn't get to play it for many years, but it is worth... The only thing, like I said, there is no Tim Curry. I hate that. But the guy playing Gabriel Knight does a fantastic job, and it is worth your time and efforts to play this game. And now that GOG has it, you don't have to worry about all the discs. So, really good game. Now, I will tell you, I don't like the third game. I'm sorry. It's got one of the worst puzzles ever with how you get your ID... Now, Tim Curry is back, and that's great, but the graphics are really bad. I think it's the worst of the 3D games that they made all in a row with the different engines. Uh, it's just so bad, and the, and, and the plot's not great. I hate that it was bad, in my opinion. You might love it. That's fine. I disliked it. So that gets through the Gabriel Knight series. <sighs> okay. Let's do Space Quest. So, Space Quest 1 is a B. Um, I really like the game. I really like the jokes. I like traveling through space and just the silliness and how Roger can die. I, I just don't like the arcade sequence. And I hate to put the remake above it, but I have to. I know that the creator hates it, <laughs> but... I really love that version because of the MT32 sound. Literally, that theme as a kid, um, if Adam were here, he would attest to that because we used to listen to the uh, MT32, MT32 version on a WAV file and we created a story series with Roger Wilco when I was in high school. Uh, we loved it so much. So I hate to put it above it, but it, it is the better game, even if he did not have anything to do with it, which I hate that part too, but that is near here nor there. I will also put the second game in the B spot. I love the remake. <laughs> Once again, not having anything to do with it, but since Sierra didn't make it, I didn't put it on here. I actually would give the remake an S rank. <laughs> so if it were here, it is so good. And this game is fun. 
it's just short. I, I, I think it was the one I got through the quickest as a kid. I just felt like it was just there and done. And it was nowhere near as funny. I just felt like something was different. Maybe, I, I don't know. I was not there. But it quickly gets better, though. Space Quest 3 is almost S-rank for me. Um, and it's one of the most fun games I've ever played. Super laid back. You, it's just open world space. You're just trying, you don't really know what to do. <laughs> you just kind of fly around trying to figure out what to do. And <laughs> eventually you do find out what to do. And then you end up saving the two guys from Andromeda and going and breaking the fourth wall and going to Sierra. I mean, all these super cool things with that. A fantastic game. And plus it's got Monolith Burger and it's got Astro Chicken. So what else could possibly you need? Well, you could need the fourth game, which the fourth game, Gary Owens, fantastic writing, great jokes, great callbacks. S-rank game. Even with Skatorama that people despise, I can't put it any lower than that. It is just a fantastic game. Love it, love it, love it, love it. And Gary Owens' stuff is so good. You get the lick and smell. All these things are fantastic. And I'm going to probably make some people happy here as well because the fifth game is just as good. Just as good. I love it. I love that it is literally a Star Trek spoof. I hate that it didn't continue in this direction in the next game and they undid every single thing that you do in this one because I love this one so much. And it's just a blast to play. The music is wonderful. The animation is fantastic. There is nothing that I dislike about Roger Wilco, uh, Space Quest V. So it's just so, so good. Which makes me sad on the sixth one because I'm going to put it here. And I'm sorry. It's an okay game. I like it. Gary Owens is back. And he keeps it from being any lower. I just feel like it took... It just is a depressing game. And I think that's probably kind of how they were at the Sierra offices at that point. I feel like the game represents how things were at that point. And it's just a hateful game. And parts of it are missing and not correct. And half done and not working right. I can't put it any higher up, and I hate that. I still like the game. I still recommend playing the game. There's a lot of Tango and Cash references that you're probably not going to get, but it's still fun. It's just nowhere near as good as any of these. And I wish that we had a Space Quest 7 to put on here, but we don't. And Space Venture is supposed to have already come out. It still hasn't, so who knows what's going on right there. We will now go... To Leisure Suit Larry. And we're going to go to the first game. I don't have the... Do I have the... Re yes. Do I have the remake version? I thought I did. Apparently it did not give me my picture for the uh, remake of the game. But that's okay. Um, the first game, totally an A. Super fantastic. Love the game. Super fun. Uh, I would put the remake in the same place as an, an A. Uh, I did not count Reloaded because Reloaded um, was not made by Sierra, obviously. It was made later. But, uh, the, I mean, the game that started all... And in my opinion, people can crap on these games now. But the big thing with these games are was the whole point was he was a loser that was completely innocent and silly. He just didn't want to be a 40-year-old virgin anymore. You know, and I think that the new people have done a good job at finding that part of him and keeping it going. So, a very, very good game. And I'm going to put Leisure Suit Larry 2 in the B slot because even though it is one of the most hard games I've ever played in my life, I love it. I love the atmosphere. I, I love going on the cruise ship. I like the beginning when you go on all the game shows and the lottery ticket things. It has a lot of timed events that you can really get screwed over on. But I really do love this game a lot. Uh, the atmosphere of the game is just wonderful. I thought about putting it at C, but I can't. So I'm going to definitely put B for, for Leisure Suit Larry 2. And that's going to lead to Leisure Suit Larry 3, which I give an A. Because it's my opinion one of the best games in the series. Um, there's still one better in my opinion. But 
I just love how Larry transforms and becomes something different. And, and the whole change of what it does, it's the ending that just completely goes off the wall that caused them not to be able to make a fourth game, basically, where they skipped it because you literally go to the real world again, like in Space Quest 3. But uh, I do like it. I like how things go. I like how you get to play as passionate Patty, and she is not just, you know, a <laughs> kind of damsel. She does her own thing, and I respect that. What I don't like is the fifth game. I, I don't know. I, I hated the change of style with Larry. I, I just, I don't like it. And it's got to go in the C rank. It's almost D. It is so bad. Um, I It's just like the, the other games again, just with prettier quote unquote graphics. And I just, I felt like the patty parts were just thrown in and make no sense with what the game was. I just don't like it. And I hate that, because I it, it could have been great. Then, in my opinion, they came back and totally redeemed themselves with Larry Six. I know there is one spot in Larry Six that people might get mad about, one of the deaths. But overall, I just think that it is what all the games were trying to be to a T. A fantastic narrator. You get, you know, the, the unzip your pants icon and do all the stuff. A ton of great jokes great artwork, great music in the MT32 sound. Just a lot of really fun stuff going on in Larry 6. And it's all kind of back into one location again. You know, you're at the hotel and you're trying to find love. I mean, it works out perfect. And then that leads to the last of the original games. And I'm going to put it at the B rank. It is a decent game. The, The graphics are beautiful. The music is amazing. But it's just, you know, more of the same. And it's still hilarious. I love the comedy on the uh, cruise ship where you can go listen to the guy talk. Lots of fun stuff. It's just it's just not as good as three or six in my opinion. Uh, the the graphics. It's just that late Sierra graphics. I just don't like as much. I like the pixel art better. It's just my opinion on that. Now, I feel like I'm missing. A game, but we'll find out here. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. We'll find out. Anyway, so the first King's Quest game makes me sad. I was built, <laughs> made way too, too late for that game. It's mean. Roberta knows it's mean. It's just mean. And it does not want you to live. It wants you to die. And it wants you to never complete it. And it makes me sad. Uh, It really is really bad, in my opinion, the original. Granted, it's the first true 3D quote-unquote game ever made. Eh, I I just felt like they could have made it a little more fun. I guess people back then might have thought it was fun. But that's okay, because when they made the remake in 1990, they did a really great job with it. And I love the music in it. I love the artwork. I love everything about it. It's a fun game definitely in the B rank uh, worth your time I would also have to put the second game in the C rank however if I could put the remake it would be S rank that remake that they made a few, back in the early 2000s so great so worth your time definitely an S rank uh, Just they, they've added the story they've added the Black Cloak Society stuff everything about it is super good And I'm going to put the third game in the B slot. That game is tough. Probably harder than one. But I feel like it's a little more fair as long as you have the documentation. If you don't have the documentation, you aren't beating King's Quest 3 ever. There's just no way you will be able to because you can't do the magic spells. But I really like how you're kind of this imprisoned person. And and you only have a certain amount of time to save yourself. There's just something about that I really like. Also, the remake of this, there are two really good remakes. There's an exact remake, which I would put in the B section with it. And then there's the remake of it, which I would put in the A section. A very good game as well. It just adds a little bit too much and kind of makes the game a little bit harder than it needs to be, in my opinion. And that's going to lead to... There's going to be some S ranks coming up. Pearls of Ro- uh, The Perils of Rosella. 
female protagonist, a strong female protagonist, which is going to come back when I talk about the other ones in the series. Um, just Graham is in trouble. You have a limited time to do it. It's got a day-night cycle. Uh, super cool haunted house aspect. Uh, the only thing I hate about it in a couple spots is where it just kills you horribly for no reason. But well worth it. We just finished playing it on the, on the, on the channel, so check it out. And this is also going to lead to, uh, I gotta put it up here, King's Quest V. And the reason is, when this game came out, there was nothing like it. Even before the voice acting, as bad as it could be in places, which was still amazing at the time, people forget about. Uh, it just, no one had seen anything like it before. You know, Monkey Island came out that year, and you imagine what those graphics look like compared to what King's Quest V's graphics look like. Holy cow. And the simplified point and click system where you only have a certain amount of icons that do everything it was just way 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 ahead of its time and it deserves that s rank as does the next game in the series got to be up there i cannot put it any lower king's quest 6 is the best game in the series period <laughs> great voice acting great graphics great music a fantastic story two major story twists oh goodness the cats just had an attack <laughs> scared me too I hope that doesn't scare you all I, it literally made me jump sorry about that everybody and uh, with King's Quest 6 <laughs> the, the two endings are what really just are so cool you can and then you have multiple endings inside those two endings you can not have your ring or the genie can be dead or you could have saved everyone or saved nobody. There's just so many different ways to make it happen. Jane Jensen doing her magic on King's Quest VI with the story in the Black Cloak Society. Just super well done. And unfortunately, we hit the dregs. And I've got to put King's Quest VII at D. And I'm going to tell you why. Nothing to do with the music, which is great. And nothing to do with the graphics, which are fine. Nothing to do with the backgrounds that are beautiful. It's what they did to Rosella. I, I don't understand why they made her whiny and why they didn't make her a true adventurer like she was in, in the fourth game. I don't understand. I don't like anything about how they did that. It literally just pisses me off thinking about it. And while I like Mask of Eternity, it is not anywhere near the C rank. So it's better, in my opinion, than the seventh game by a teeny bit, but it's not, it's not King's Quest. It, you know, it was the beginning of the end of Sierra at that point. I just, ugh, it just angers me to this day of those last two. After six was so good. I mean, literally four, five, and six are just such great games. And then you have seven and eight, and it's like, what were you thinking? Now, there are tons of other games I did not put on here. Tons. But as you can see by the length of this video, <laughs> it wasn't going to be able to be much longer than this, and people even pay attention to it. So, any games I left off, like the Shivers games, uh, which I guess Shivers, I'll can talk about it real quick, I would give Shivers 1 a B, and Shivers 2 on the C slot. Um, Lighthouse, I would put in the C slot. Rama, I can't remember the full name of that one, I would put in the B slot. Uh, but there are lots and lots of others. Manhunter 2 I would put down in the D slot. So, you know, I just didn't get them all. One I do want to say, I forgot, I had it. I don't know where it's, it didn't show up on here. That's the one I can't find. Jones in the Fast Lane. I literally put the thing in this and it didn't show up. That's an s rank game. You have to play Jones in the Fast Lane with your friends. It is so fun. It's so much better than the game of life. You really need to play it. So it would be right here. So we have a lot of great games and some really bad ones and then some okay ones and then a lot of really great games. So I'm sure you don't agree with my list and that's okay. Actually, I do think I'm going to, let me see. Yeah, no, okay, I'm good. Never mind. I was going to change something, but I'm not going to. So <clears throat> we will go from here. You can shoot me and threaten my life. Do whatever you want about my tier list, but uh, I hope you enjoyed. That was the point. Bye, everybody.